1945. After more than five years, the greatest war in history is nearing its end. The Russians were only 35 miles from Berlin. In Italy, the 5th Army pressed towards the River Po. Hitler's Western Front had collapsed. Eisenhower was across the Rhine, driving deep into Germany. Nazi concentration camp already reduced to skeletons the promise of life. For Adolf Hitler, for the Germans, Gotterdammerung the twilight of the gods. After the birthday congratulations, the more serious business of the day. The Russians are at the gates of Berlin. Hitler is urged to leave this very night. Two days later, Hitler made his decision to stay in Berlin. Like Hitler, Mussolini seems to have kept his illusions until almost the last moment. Late in March, he had paid a final visit to his German partner. He returned, buoyed up. But not for long. Allied armies are approaching northern Italy. On the evening of April 25th, Mussolini sets out from Milan for Switzerland to try to save his neck. With him is his young mistress, Clara Patacci. Stopped by partisan patrol. The Duce begs for his life. Spare my life, he cries, and I will give you an empire. On April 28, Mussolini and his mistress are stood against a wall and machine gun. To hide them from the Allies, the partisans stand on the bodies of the former dictator and his mistress as they are brought back in a truck to Milan, the city where fascism was born. Several days later, Heinrich Himmler, the chief of the Nazi Gestapo, offers to surrender the German armies in the West, but only in the West. I spoke to President Truman. I told him the surrender should be to the three major powers. He expressed strong agreement. Stalin agreed. I consider your proposal, he writes to Churchill, 
the only correct one. Knowing you, I had no doubt that you would act in this way. Stalin's reply was the most cordial message I ever had from him. April 28th, the Russians are fighting in the streets of Berlin. down in the bunker under the chancellery in besieged Berlin, Adolf Hitler refuses to believe that his thousand-year Reich will come to an end. On approximately the 22nd of April, 1945, Hermann Goering, who was in Berchtesgaden at that time, uh, telephoned Adolf Hitler and indicated to him that he thought the war was over. And if anything happened to Hitler, he, Goering, would take over as Fuhrer. He further suggested to Hitler that uh, he, uh, Goering, negotiate with the Americans for the surrender of the German forces. This made uh, Hitler uh, furious, uh, whereupon he ordered uh, the SS uh, people to move into Birch's Garden, arrest uh, Goering, uh, which he did. The SS took uh, Goering to a villa in near Birch's Garden, and that day Hitler ordered uh, Goering assassinated. It so happened that Goering had some friends too, his Luftwaffe people, who uh, attacked the villa, uh, drew uh, uh, fire, and also uh, defeated the SS people, uh, whereupon uh, Goering was saved for a short while. After the Luftwaffe had rescued Goering, he sent a message to General Eisenhower through uh, an agent. Uh, it was read by General Patch, and General Patch said he is not going to see Eisenhower. If he wants to surrender, he can surrender like an ordinary prisoner. Uh, whereupon he did, and he drove in a few days later, gave himself up in a beautiful sports limousine and then became one of uh, an additional 249 distinguished German guests of mine in my prisoner war camp. In besieged Berlin, word comes that the Russians are but a few blocks away. April 29th, Hitler made his will. He is cornered in his underground bunker in Berlin. The Russians are a block away. April 30, 1945, Adolf Hitler's last day on this earth. After Hitler, the German army. Germany itself. Their end has come too. Hitler lunched quietly in his suite. At the end, he shook hands with those present and retired to his private room. At half past three, a shot was heard. He had shot himself through the mouth. Ava Brown, whom he had married secretly during these last days, lay dead beside him. She had taken poison. A time and date to remember. 3.30 p.m. Monday, April 30, 1945. Twelve years and three.
three months to the day after Adolf Hitler became Chancellor of Germany. As millions of helpless men, women and children died, so now their executioner dies too. bodies were burnt in the courtyard. Hitler's funeral pyre, with the din of the Russian guns growing ever louder, made a lurid end to the Third Reich. Wars don't end on a single shot. In the case of the war in Germany, for days beforehand, we knew the end was coming. The German army in front of us was disintegrating. Soldiers were throwing their rifles away. A vast mass of refugees had begun to appear on all the roads. It had ceased really to be a war anymore. And then through this horde of homeless, helpless people, and it was very cold, there suddenly appeared a group of German generals and it was realized at once that they were the senior German officers who had come to surrender. They had come without announcement, almost like refugees themselves. I was chief of staff at Supreme Headquarters of the Allied Expeditionary Forces during the time when these events occurred. The next day, uh, there arrived uh, Admiral von Friedeberg, who was representing the new uh, temporary or provisional German government. Our preparations for the forthcoming negotiations included the preparation of a fictitious map on a small scale, such as you would find in a high school geography. But it showed the entire front and the correct location of all of our divisions and all of the German divisions as we knew them. It was fictitious, however, in that it included a large striking force with a thrust line uh, indicating an attack to join up with the Russians when uh, Admiral Friedeberg told me that he was without authority to sign but was simply there in the guise of a negotiator I noticed at the same time that his eye wandered to this map. So I picked it up and handed it to him. He looked at it for a moment or two, and tears began to run down each cheek. He went into the room where communication facilities were available for him, and of course we monitored his conversation, the principal part of which was the statement that what they, the Germans, had hoped to accomplish was no longer possible, and that the only alternative to a debacle was immediate surrender. <laughs> The instrument of total, unconditional surrender was signed by General Beadle Smith and General Yodel with French and Russian officers as witnesses. This historic action takes place at 2.41 a.m. on May 7th in a schoolhouse in Rams. Hot 
hostilities will end officially at one minute after midnight tonight, Tuesday the 8th of May. But in the interest of saving lives, the ceasefire began yesterday to be sounded along all the fronts. The German war is therefore at an end. We may allow ourselves a brief period of rejoicing. Today is Victory in Europe Day.